For all of us, the forest means life. But life isn't like it used to be. The world is changing, and so is the way we view our forests. Years ago, people thought our forests were an unlimited resource and saw no need for reforesting. We logged throughout this vast frontier to make way for the cities, towns, and homes which now dot British Columbia. The lumber industry grew, provided jobs, and became a way of life, playing an important role in our lives and the economic growth of the province. As British Columbians' expectations changed through the years, so have the harvesting and reforestation practices. Successful regeneration starts before a single tree is felled. By law, a complete harvesting and reforestation plan must be developed for each area of Crown land. This plan identifies the proposed harvesting method and clearly demonstrates how the area will be reforested. Consideration must also be given to other resource values, such as water, wildlife, and recreation. This video will take a brief look at one phase of the forest management plan, reforestation. We will review current reforestation practices and some of the historical accomplishments which provided the building blocks for today's reforestation program. In British Columbia, the law demands that if it is harvested, it must be reforested. Trees must be looked after until they become healthy, thriving forests. Every year in British Columbia, areas totaling the size of 400 Stanley Parks are planted. And in the last 50 years, more than 3 billion trees have been planted. That's about 900 trees for every person living in British Columbia. Over one billion trees have been planted in the last four years alone. Reforestation will continue to exceed the rate of harvest until the year 2000, as we catch up on the backlog of area that was not satisfactorily restocked in the past. To ensure successful regeneration, the Forest Service monitors all harvesting and reforestation on public land. In many areas after logging, nature simply takes over. Here, near the University of British Columbia, a low elevation coastal forest, which was clear cut about 80 years ago, did in fact reproduce the same kind of forest, species and structure that we had in the old growth forest that we inherited from the past. We've had lots of hardwood trees, we have an overstory of Douglas fir, we have hemlock and cedar coming in underneath, the same kind of forest that was here originally. While natural regeneration successfully provides British Columbia with millions of future trees, it doesn't always provide us with control over the quality of the trees or the species. In some cases, natural regeneration may not start quickly enough or may lead to slow growth, or not enough healthy trees. Sometimes trees are left standing to seed the harvested area around them. Initially, natural regeneration was the only method available in British Columbia. However, tree planting has increased and is currently used on over 50% of areas to be reforested. For areas we've decided to plant, many factors are taken into account. We've learned a lot since we planted this first plantation in 1932. We've learned that before we log it, we have to know what kind of species to plant back, and that that species has to be adapted to the soil to the amount of rainfall and sunshine that an area gets, to the length of the growing season, and to the elevation. We've come a long way. 
These factors determine which of the 19 different species we plant in British Columbia will best suit a particular area. The seedlings planted come from cones collected in natural stands close to the area being harvested. The cones are transported to the provincial seed center. When the cones arrive at the tree seed center, we initially process them one of two ways, either in a heated kiln to dry and open the cone or in cool conditions over a longer period of time to dry and have the seed release from the cone. We then put the seed through a series of cleanings to remove extraneous material um, that can be moisture bearing or damage the seed. It goes through dewinging, sizing and final separation and the product is then ready for long-term storage. The Tree Seed Center is uh, world-class, employing uh, the best of local and international technology. Our staff are well-qualified and highly specialized and uh, all of us take pride in the service we deliver, the facilities in which we work, and in seeing a seedling being grown, knowing full well that the seed at some point has passed through one of our hands. The resulting seed stock goes to one of the many nurseries throughout the province. When the seeds come to Surrey Nursery, we sow them into containers like the ones you see behind me. Then we put them into greenhouses, which are environmentally controlled, to germinate and grow them for a period of one to two years. We use computers to control light, humidity, and temperature to maximize the seedling's growth, which results in huge cost savings and a better product. Surrey Nursery grows about 15 million of the over 200 million seedlings produced annually in British Columbia. Seedlings ready for planting are delivered to tree planters all over the province. One of the main improvements I've seen in planting over the years has been the professionalism involved in producing better stock. The trees are in the peak of condition when we receive them and uh, they make us uh, look after them really well. And so things have really improved that way. And as a result, uh, more than anything else, the survival rate has is, is, is shot up. This process began more than 50 years ago after the huge Sayward fire on the north end of Vancouver Island. In 1939, when I came into reforestation, there was only 3,000 acres planted in British Columbia prior to that. So uh, reforestation was in its infancy. But with this fire, it was soon realized that we had a tremendous job of planting to be done. We developed from the beginning when we knew little about it, and through a process of, of evolution and hard work, we uh, have developed one of the best um, nursery operations, I think, in the world. Just very recently, I was up to Campbell River and had the pleasure of uh, being escorted around through many of the old plantations. I came away feeling very, very happy at what I saw. This area was uh, logged and then planted in 1981 with Douglas fir and after the plantation was established it received some brushing and weeding treatments to keep it brush free and just recently it had juvenile spacing and pruning treatments. I know that this stand will be logged again in my lifetime. When we drove in here to look at the uh, site after the West Fire in 1971, it was uh, still smoking and it just was black and uh, it was uh, acres after acres just wide open and black. We started planting with a, a student crew and then we built up uh, into larger crews and got the job done. The trees that you see now were just planted right in behind the fire. Actually, we had a mop-up crew and a planting crew at the same time through here and uh, try to get the reforestation back as quick as possible because of the Barkerville Road and uh, this is basically where we started. You can see here how well it's doing, how good it's growing and it's totally rewarding to come back and have a look after 20 years.
When I went up to the Sioux Fire in 1977 and 78 for planting, it was totally black and barren. There was no wildlife. It looked like a bomb had devastated the whole valley. Through the 1980s, I planted doing field planting for the Ministry of Forests on the Sioux Fire, just filling in areas where the plantations hadn't taken. In 1985, we planted this large plantation on the Sioux Fire. They've just taken off. I can go back to blocks that I've planted and the trees are free growing up to nine meters tall. There's deer, there's elk, there's moose, there's bear. It feels absolutely wonderful. Depending on the area, seedlings may be planted in the shade, beside stumps and logs, or on higher ground. To maintain diversity, two or more different kinds of seedlings are often planted in one area. In some areas, the forest land needs to be prepared before it can be regenerated. In British Columbia, ecosystems are diverse and site preparation must be tailored to the specific needs of each area. In dry areas, trenches may be created to collect scarce moisture. On wet sites, a mound may be needed to improve drainage and warm the soil. Some planted areas can be left to grow into healthy forests. But it's not always that easy. Deer can eat the seedlings. Disease attacks them. Insects can kill or stunt their growth. We regularly review planted and natural reforested areas to determine how well they are growing. Seedlings often must compete with other forms of plant life for space, light, water, and nutrients. To help the trees along, crews will brush out the area. Sheep are also used to graze on the plants competing with the young trees. They eat the weeds and brush, but leave the seedlings to grow. Where regeneration is not completely successful, Tree planters return to selectively fill in the patches where trees haven't grown back. We have come a long way since the Sayward fire. The Sayward forest has now grown to the point where harvesting has begun again with commercial thinning of the early plantations. Our forest industry forms the backbone of British Columbia's economy. It's an ever-shifting balance between the forest environment and the economic needs of the people. Over 200 million trees are planted each year, with one billion trees planted in the last four years alone. By law, every area harvested on Crown land is reforested by nature or by planting. As our relationship with the forest continues to grow, so does our knowledge. And so do the trees. Reforestation in British Columbia, a growing success.